when we defined quasi-coherent sheaves, we wanted sheaves of modules that when you restrict them to the open sets in an open cover, you get sheaves that came from honest modules over these uh, rings. But these modules in themselves could be rather ugly. In particular, they could have torsion or they could be uh, of infinite uh, rank or, or some such thing. So now we will restrict our attention to an important class of nicely behaved modules, namely that of locally free modules. So if X is a scheme, then a sheaf of modules on X is called locally free. If there is an open cover of affine subschemes, so that the uh, restriction uh, on M to UI is given by the sheaf associated to a module MI, where we require that this module MI, as an RI module, is free of finite rank. So this means that MI is isomorphic as an RI module to some finite number of copies of RI. And if this rank, which in general can vary with the various UI, is constant, meaning that all MI have rank R over their respective base rings, then we say that the sheaf of modules is a locally free sheaf or a locally free module of constant rank R. So a few remarks. Indeed, the rank doesn't have to be the same over all UI. And worse than that, it is not guaranteed and in general not true that whichever open subset in X you take, the restriction will uh, be the sheaf associated to a free OXU module of finite rank. Perhaps the easiest example of this is if you take as X the set of two points uh, or uh, viewed as a variety over, over some algebraically closed field K. So X is then spec of K times K. And then if I take the module K times zero, that is so to speak K on one point and zero on the other point, then this is not a free module over K uh, times K, but its restrictions are free to each open set. In this way, you can also construct examples where the rank is not exact as well, is not constant as well. Uh, fibers of such uh, locally free modules are finite dimensional vector spaces. This is because the fibers are the localizations of the modules at um, maximal, maximal ideal. So remember the fibers are the pullbacks uh, that correspond to the inclusion of closed points into X. And so for that reason, locally free sheaves are called vector bundles because at each point you have a vector space of finite dimension. And if this finite dimension happens to be constantly one, then you call this a line bundle. examples of vector bundles. So if X is a scheme, the structure sheaf OX is a line bundle. This is because it is the, uh, well, it gives you OXU over each OXU, which is exactly a free module of rank one. You can check that if you have two locally free X modules of rank M and N respectively, then their direct sum, tensor product, and the dual of either of them is locally free, and the rank is what you would expect. Check this is to take an open cover where these, uh, so to speak, trivialize, meaning where, where they are 
um, associated to modules m and n, and then the result follows from linear algebra on free modules. Next, if you have a morphism of schemes, then the pullback of a locally free scheme is locally free. Uh, the pullback of a locally free sheaf of modules is locally free of the same rank. And the reason for that is if I have M isomorphic to, well, again, working on an affine setting, if M is isomorphic to some ring R to the power N, then tensoring S over R, this, well, let me say M, this is S to the power N as an S module. What happens with the push forward? That is for you to think about. Also, if uh, I take a closed subscheme of the projective space, such as the scheme associated to a projective variety, then the uh, twisting sheaf of X is defined by pulling back the twisting sheaf for the corresponding integer on Pn. And this is a line bundle. And the reason is that the pullback of a line bundle is a line bundle. So why is OPND a line bundle? Well, you can cover projective space by the usual open sets UI, sets of all x0 to xn, such that xi does not vanish. And on that ui, you can multiply by xi to the power m, or to the power d, rather, to exhibit an isomorphism locally between o, p, n, d of u and o, p n zero of u and uh, this will be an isomorphism and because the uh, uh, check for line bundle is done locally you get uh, what you need because o p n zero this is just the usual structure sheaf of projective space One property of local freeness that is important is how it relates to exactness. So if you have an exact sequence of quasi-coherent sheaves on a scheme X, then it will remain exact after tensoring with a quasi-coherent module M, provided that either M itself or all of the mi are locally free. Again, this is checked locally and the corresponding result uh, is known for modules. So if you know the result for modules, free modules have exactly this property that they behave well with exactness. In general, tensoring is not an exact functor. And likewise, pullback preserves exactness whenever all the MIs are locally free. Again, on the level of modules, F star of MI is tensoring with some ring of this MI. And again, this uh, preserves exactness if the M I are locally free, meaning if the MI are free modules. So the properties of free modules translate rather neatly into properties of locally free sheaves.